Welcome back to another episode of Exploring Shasta County History. I'm your host, Jeremy M. Tuggle. Today, we're examining a railway from Bonita to Delamar, the Sacramento Valley and Eastern Railroad. That was the scene on Squaw Creek arm of Shasta Lake when the lake level was at 171.99 feet below the crest of Shasta Dam on November 2nd, 2014. It was lower then than it was in this next series of footage. You see it there, just emerging out of the water. This is on Squaw Creek Arm. Hey guys, check this out. There are still railroad ties left. That was the scene on Squaw Creek arm of Shasta Lake when the lake level was at 130.27 feet below the Chris Shasta Dam. This was on July 9th, 2021. Uh. So this is the historic tramway, aerial tramway of the Sacramento Valley and Eastern Railroad. And the tramway just keeps on going. And yes, I'll include the water levels probably at the beginning of this video and throughout it. Looking back, that's Town Creek Dam. You guys are doing okay? All right. If you want, you can cross over here and connect with me. This goes up to the same place they're going. I've been out here numerous times. Yeah. They're going on up to see the smelter site remains. There's quite a bit up there, including a huge concrete sluice box. Is that like, what's up there? Yep. Uh, it's more this way. Like I say, you can take either way. Okay. I'm just trying to film what's left of the tramway. Not really. And look at this. Here's the railroad tie. 
that's a railroad ramping holding the ties into the ground. So it sat on top of the tramway going across. Hey guys, look what I found! A railroad ribbon! It held the ties, the spikes! And it was on top of the tramway! Oh, look at that! Iron sticking out! Wow! Look at that. That's cool. Right? There's some iron right here too. Whoa. Yep. That's cool. Arvin, come here. Ooh. Now we're back on the ore car bed. This is what took the ore cars up to the smelter site. So that was the scene on Squaw Creek arm of Shasta Lake when the lake level was at 121.38 feet below the crest of Shasta Dam on April 30th, 2022. Originally, this railroad was known as the Kennett to De Lamar Road, which officially became the Sacramento Valley and Eastern Railroad, also known as Sacramento Valley and Eastern Railway. Prior to December 11, 1906, this company completed surveying the proposed railroad route, and on that date, they began the construction of bridging the Sacramento River at that location to put across the railroad track. At that time, they had employed a crew of 70 men, which were paid between $2.25 and $2.50 per day for their work. The initial starting point of this construction was located three miles north of Kennet, on the line of the Southern Pacific Railroad, as they began extending it easterly from that point across the Sacramento River towards Bully Hill Smelter at De Lamar. However, it wasn't until January 8, 1907, that the Articles of Incorporation for the Sacramento Valley and Eastern Railroad were filed in the Shasta County Clerk's Office at Reading. This railroad company was incorporated that day for $300,000, divided into 3,000 shares at $100 per share. The directors of this newly established railroad company were D.M. Ryordan of De Lamar, John B. Keating of Reading, James W. Schoonover of Reading, Herbert R. Hanley of Reading, and Thomas B. Dozier. Of Reading. It was engineers McCarthy and Stewart of Oakland, California, who were awarded the contracts for the construction and grading of this brand new railroad. Then, in January of 1907, it was announced that a new railroad depot and town called Bonita was planned at this location. The Southern Pacific Railroad had just completed a spur line for them at Bonita coming from their main rail line. Immediately, McCarthy and Stewart began erecting a brand new railroad depot for the Sacramento Valley and Eastern Railroad on the Southern Pacific Line. This became the starting point of this brand new railroad, three miles north of Kennet. Bonita was a Spanish word which meant beautiful in English. During the interim, a local writing newspaper called The Searchlight kept insisting it was called Pitt, P-I-T-T, -T, which attracted the attention of the board of directors of the above rural company and made John B. Keating contact the Sacramento Daily Union newspaper Sacramento to make the statement official. Keating said that Pitt had never been suggested by the company and Bonita is the name and will continue to be the name. Even though Keating made this statement to the Sacramento newspaper, 
local ready newspaper the searchlight continued referencing the new depot in town as pit even the courier free press newspaper variety called it Benita. the purpose of the sacramento valley and eastern railroad was to conduct a 15 mile standard gauge ore car freight delivery and passenger steam locomotive railroad in shasta county no some sources say 18 miles this railroad was built to connect to these landmarks and towns crossing the Sacramento River at Bonita and staying on the north side of the Pitt River until it went under the old Pitt River arch-shaped bridge and then extended from there on the north side of the Pitt River crossing at the mouth of the McLeod River and then extending through the town of Pearl until it reached the junction of Squaw Creek and Pitt River when it departed Pitt River by turning left up Squaw Creek and through Copper City and beyond until the railroad reached Delamar at the Bully Hill Smelter. The Courier Free Press newspaper ready exclaimed that this road will give the Bully Hill Smelter direct rail communication with the Southern Pacific and will save thousands of dollars in the way of freights. Freight to Bully Hill now goes by the way of the Terry Road. The construction manager for this rail line was F.J. Dearborn, whose foreman was Charles O'Neill. Three construction camps were laid out by the railroad company, and from the Searchlight newspaper writing, it is learned that the first camp was situated directly across the Little Sacramento from the camps of the engineering and cement crews. The small army of workmen that will arrive from all quarters will cross the river at Pitt on a ferry boat that has already been constructed. High water at present covers and hides from view. The cement piers that were set in excavations made to bedrock, but it is thought the water will subside by the time the bridge timbers arrive from Portland. The iron and steel required for the bridge are already unloaded from the spur track that the Southern Pacific built at Pitt within 300 yards of where the material is to be used. The next construction camp would later be located at Hurl, and the last construction camp was located in between Copper City and Delamar. By February 16, 1907, Bonita was becoming a storage center for products pertaining to the Sacramento Valley and Eastern Railroad and the Bully Hill Company. For instance, 10 carloads of coke for the smelter of the Bully Hill Company, whose parent company was General Electric Company of Shintady, New York, was delivered to this location by the Southern Pacific Railroad just to await the completion of the soon-to-be-constructed rail line. Other products would later arrive at Bonita. Then on February 28, 1907, the newly employed laborers of the Sacramento Valley and Eastern Railroad arrived at Bonita to continue working on the bridge across the Sacramento River. However, progress had stopped on the bridge due to recent rainstorms in the North State, which brought additional high water to the Sacramento River. Then tragedy struck at Bonita while crossing the Sacramento River on a newly constructed ferry, which capsized over high water. On March 11, 1907, the Courier Free Press reported at least 11 Greeks were drowned in the Pitt River this afternoon. They were in a crowd of 15 persons, including ferryman George Wesley, an Indian, and foreman Charles O'Neill. This article was written as is. Dearborn gathered a crew of half hundred men and headed to the river to help gather bodies. They started dragging the river bed in hopes of locating them. The above newspaper claimed when the boat began to dip, the Greeks began chattering like a bunch of monkeys and acted more like a band of sheep than men. They lost their heads completely and as a result lost their lives. During the upcoming days, additional bodies kept emerging in the Sacramento River which was lowering to its normal water mark. This made the death total climbed as there were more people on the ferry than originally reported. Later, it was estimated that 23 bodies were recovered from the river from this incident. There was only one coroner's inquest report held by Shasta County Coroner Thomas J. Houston upon the body of Spiridon Lantos. Lantos was the first employee recovered from the river. Houston gathered a coroner's inquest jury comprised of Charles Bauer, W.H. Williams, 
C. Hammond, H. F. Chapman, J. E. Moss, E. Mason, A. C. Carlock, E. F. Woods, and J. H. Hunter. It was Thomas B. Dozier who acted as counsel for the Sacramento Valley and Eastern Railroad during this crisis. Relatives and friends of deceased men tried blaming this disaster on the Sacramento Valley and Eastern Railroad by saying the disaster was due to overcrowding the ferry boat and the unseaworthy condition of the craft itself. Yet, the coroner's inquest jury found no evidence of foul play, and it was agreed that death to all involved were made by accidental drowning. Then on March 16, 1907, hundreds of people paid their respects to the drowned workmen of Sacramento Valley and Eastern Railroad by appearing at Houston's undertaking parlor on Market Street in Reading at 2 p.m. and a funeral cortege honored their memory by routing their coffins up Market Street to Shasta Street, thence to Reading Cemetery now Reading Memorial Park for burial. After the ferry tragedy took place, the railroad company wasted no time in returning to work on the Sprail Line. Under Dearborn's management, new laborers were hired as well to replace the men who drowned. By March 7, 1907, 200 men were employed by the Sacramento Valley and Eastern Railroad, which were in the process of finishing the bridge on the Sacramento River. The next step was to begin laying track across the new span while the development of the Sacramento Valley and Eastern Railroad pressed on. March 12, 1907 marked the arrival of two carloads of mules and one carload of grading machinery for the Sacramento Valley and Eastern Railroad, which were immediately placed to work on the railroad construction. During April and May, there were a few concerned citizens in this district who owned private property in the area of the new railroad. They were worried about the possibility of the railroad invading their property rights, so they confronted the railroad company with their worries before they signed off on granting them a right-of-way through their personal property. Eventually, these legal negotiations with the Sacramento Valley and Eastern Railroad were reached and the contracts were signed off before the railroad construction reached their land. Local De La Mar businessman Albert J. Smith purchased a tract of land in Section 31, Township 34, North Range 3 West, the Mount Diablo Basin Meridian, which was developed alongside Pitt River. Smith developed and named the property Iron. Eventually, a local newspaper claimed the following about Iron. The new town of Iron will take its place among the many boom towns in Shasta County, and town lots will be on the market very soon. The article concludes by saying it is the center of supplies and will be the town at the Pearl Smelter. Eventually, the Sacramento Valley and Eastern Railroad reached the Iron Subdivision as it followed along Pitt Avenue and Pitt River at the subdivision near Pearl. The official plaque for iron actually describes it as a subdivision and not a town site. Then on July 11, 1907, a crew of graders on the De La Mar Railroad had put in a heavy blast about a mile below Harrow and the power line that supplied the juice to the smelter was blown down by then. The power was generated by the Northern California Power Company's line at Hurl, owned and operated by Hampton H. Noble who installed the plant for $70,000. Currently, it was an easy fix and no harm was done to each company, but it delayed the progress of the electric smelter at Hurl. According to its official plat, the subdivision of Iron included the following streets, High Street and Pitt Avenue, which were the longest streets in the subdivision, and smaller streets such as West Street, Main Street and Crystal Street. It was Pitt Avenue which was cut and graded along the bend of the Pitt River and named after the river. Smith had the subdivision patented in the Shasta County Recorder's Office at Reading and this patent shows the land was surveyed by Alf Boutsell on July 27, 1907. As Smith began selling lots within this subdivision to compete with the nearby communities of Copper City and De La Mar. While completing the grading of the Sacramento Valley and Eastern Railroad near Copper City on August 8, 1907, a fatal explosion killed one person. The man who died as a result of the explosion was a Greek named Peter Susmus. Two other Greeks were injured, including Tom Scondris and George Pintos. Pintos was a foreman of Nearbond's grading crew, which worked on the rail line. Trouble occurred when Pintos was tamping a hole with black powder. He used an iron drill. A spark from the drill ignited the powder and the explosion filled his face and chest full of rock and dirt. His eyes were practically put out 
and will undoubtedly be blind. As one of the news articles explain, everyone that was injured was taken to the hospital at Delamar where they were treated. By the state, a working class hospital had been organized in that town. Sesimus died on the way to the hospital. Later that year, on October 20, 1907, the Sacramento Daily Union newspaper Sacramento published this article on the subject here, titled, Steel Bridge Finished Across the Sacramento Pit. The Sacramento Valley and Eastern Railroad Bridge across the Sacramento at this place, a steel structure stands completed. Bridge hauling crew has gone to McLeod to begin the erection of a steel bridge across that street. A locomotive for the company is on the way from San Francisco and should arrive here any day. Cars have been ordered and a full complement of rolling stock for present needs should be here inside 10 days or two weeks. Track lane will begin Monday morning. All the steel rails for the 18 miles of railroad are in store here. The company has about 300 men in three camps working at grading. The roadbed is practically completed as far as Copper City. Most of the graders are working between Copper City and De La Mar. The bridge across the McLeod should be completed in about four weeks. This article is written as is. Their grading crews had reached the vicinity in between Copper City and Delamar by November 5th, 1907, and began setting up the third camp in the area. While the construction crews on the new bridge at the McLeod River had been trying to complete its construction, it wasn't until a month later on December 14th, that the construction crews brought the rail line of the Sacramento Valley and Eastern Railroad into the town of Hurl and the subdivision of Iron. On the following day, the Sacramento Valley and Eastern Railroad locomotive engine number one made its first trip into Hurl, hauling goods to the electrolytic smelter town, and many residents were there to witness the train coming into the Hurl depot. At the start of the new year, in January of 1908, the Sacramento Valley and Eastern Railroad installed a steam scraper to excavate the railway between Horse Creek and the town of Delamar. They were excavating at a route of 600 yards per day. Three men operated this steam scraper, which got its power from its donkey engine. It was reported by the media that the roadway is nearly completed. In fact, only about a mile and a quarter of more excavating is required. Another milestone for the Sacramento Valley and Eastern Railroad was reached when their construction crews laid tracks into the pioneer mining town of Copper City on Squaw Creek. Apparently, there were many people rejoicing over the fact that the brand new railroad was accessible here at this location and many people stood at the Copper City Depot to watch the construction crew lay tracks to their historic town. After that, the construction crews met up with the grading crews at camp number three in between Copper City and Delamar and celebrated their progress. By January 21st, the first delivery of products came into Copper City, which consisted of coke for the smelter at Bully Hill. In February, a Reading resident, Michael E. Dittmar, the director of the Delamar Townsite Company since the year 1900, was quoted in the newspaper and mentioned the following the beautiful weather of the past 10 days has enabled the company to lay its steel as far as smelter, and while a great deal remains to be done, and a large force will no doubt be employed on the railroad for some time to come, getting the railroad bed in shape and blasting the rock, the work will not delay blowing in at the first furnace more than a few weeks longer. In fact, the company expects to have a furnace, have a furnace in commission by the 1st of March or very shortly thereafter. Thousands of tons of coke and supplies have accumulated along the line of the Sacramento Valley and Eastern Railroad, connecting the Bully Hill Company's mine and smelter with the Southern Pacific Railroad. A new locomotive will be received by the company in the course of a week or 10 days. And when this addition to the equipment arrives, the freights will be delivered at Delamar very rapidly. The new locomotive was constructed by the Baldwin Locomotive Works and is at present en route, accompanied by a man sent from the works who will deliver the engine at its destination. As soon as the first furnace is in commission, the force at Delamar will be largely 
increased. At the present time, only a small force is working in the mine, and the construction force also is not as large as it will be when supplies and materials can be readily delivered. In addition to the increased construction force and the large number of miners that will be employed, the three smelter shifts will also be put on, and that will mean great activity at Delamar. Even under present conditions, it is impossible to get a room in the town. A large Bauman Hotel has been filled for some time, and the same is true of the Messinger Hotel. Mr. Fisher of the Bauman Hotel has taken a three years lease on my building, and the building is now being gotten in shape for an annex, providing additional sleeping apartments for the large hotel. Alomar will no doubt be the most active town in Northern California this season. There will be a great deal of building underway within 60 days. The great advantage of Delamar will not alone be the fact that the town will be the distributing point for the Sacramento Valley and Eastern Railroad, but the mine and smelter is located practically at the same place, and there is a greater community of interest between miners and smelter men than at any other smelting town in Shasta County. The Sacramento Valley and Eastern Railroad will present the opportunity to take a run over a very picturesque route. After leaving the mouth of Pitt River, the McLeod is crossed at its confluence, show to beautiful advantage in the green view of the mountainside. Pitt River shows great stretches of placid water, and at other points, rapids relieve the scenery. The road passes directly through Hurl on the Pit, and then follows the Squaw Creek drainage from a point a short distance below Copper City through that old pioneer town to Delamar. A trip on Sacramento Valley and Eastern Railroad will become very popular when the beauties of the scenery and the opportunities of the district are better understood. The company will put on a passenger service connecting with the Southern Pacific trains. Although it is probable that 60 days or so will elapse before a passenger service can be provided. In the meantime, the roadbed will be very materially improved. The company intends to use granulized slag for blasting the road, and this will not alone provide material for the blast, but will tend to keep down dust and overcome much of the discomfort of summer travel. During May, the Bully Hill Company decided to sell Pitt River Toll Bridge for a price of $5,700, which was about one half of the original cost of the bridge. They offered this price to the County of Shasta. Bully Hill Company made the decision to sell because of the building of the Sacramento Valley and Eastern Railroad which made the bridge unnecessary in the operations of the company, but it is a source of great convenience to those people thereabouts who want the bridge maintained. The Board of Supervisors took this into consideration and told the Bully Hill Company that they would report back at the July term of the Board of Supervisors. The Courier Free Press remarked the following, The proposition seems a good one for the county, and for the offer of the smelting company, a most liberal one. Eventually, the Pitt River Toll Bridge picked up more attention by the local media. In June, it was rumored that Sacramento Valley and Eastern Railway was going to continue its construction past Bully Hill and down the Pitt River Canyon towards our tourists. Survey crews were sent that month to take the long trek to see if it could be done. A team went to Alturas to strike out at that point to connect with Bully Hill, and another went to Bully Hill to strike out from that point to connect with Alturas and try to meet each other halfway in between to determine if this could be done or not. A lot of hopes were raised and several reports surfaced in the media about the survey. Eventually, the project was abandoned. Summer baseball was well underway at Delamar with the formation of the Delamar Giants Baseball Club. They played through most of the triple digit summer, taking on other teams in and out of the area. One notable game was played against the Reading Big Store Baseball Club, which was owned by the McCormick Seltzer Company of Reading, which at that time operated a branch store at Delamar. 
the game was held on the diamond at Delamar on August 2nd, 1908. This game was a special event as a large crowd of spectators from Reading rode the Sacramento Valley and Eastern Railway for the very first time, which made the local news. The Delamar Giants Baseball Club won that afternoon, beating the Reading Big Store Baseball Club by a tally of 9-4, which the Reading newspaper called it a one-sided score. It was reported that 82 Reading citizens attended the ball game and took an advantage to ride the brand new railroad on its grand opening. Then on the evening of October 12, 1908, a Greek by the name of William Caresses died from a result of riding inside the freight car of a train on the Sacramento Valley and Eastern Railway at Delamar. A rock on the track was the cause of the disaster which led to three men being thrown off the freight car. The freight car was struck by a nearby telephone pole which came crashing down onto the school of Paresis, instantly killing him on the scene. The other two men were directly injured but survived the accident. It was quarter Thomas J. Houston who arrived at Delamar to take the deceased into writing to hold a quarter's inquest report on the body of Paresis. The Sacramento Valley and Eastern Railway kept busy with travelers traveling the rail line and hauling the freight into the area as local communities flourished. Even after Pacific Constructors Incorporated started the initial construction work of Shasta Dam at the junction of Sacramento and Pitt Rivers, at the former site of Quorum in 1938, the Sacramento Valley and Eastern Railroad operated until 1939. Flooding for the reservoir for Shasta Dam called Shasta Lake or Lake Shasta began in 1942, began to submerge the entire railroad and the towns it was routed through up to Delamar on Squaw Creek Arm. This now oft-forgotten railway usually appears out of the water in drought seasons. It was last seen in 1977, 1991, 2008, 2014, and 2021 droughts. It's usually out of the water by 120 feet below the crest of Shasta Dam. And yet the story doesn't stop there folks. Up here at Fondell Oaks just off I-5 North, uh, north of Mountain Gate, we have a remaining relic from the Sacramento Valley and Eastern Railroad. This is engine number two. Sacramento Valley and Eastern Railway, locomotive number two. In front of you is Baldwin 262T. This locomotive was manufactured by the Baldwin Locomotive Works of Philadelphia in 1907. Steam tested January 28, 1908. And then purchased by the Sacramento Valley and Eastern Railway. Known as the Sacramento Valley and Eastern number two, this engine was used for the transport of copper ore, freight and passengers between Delamar and Pitt Station on the Southern Pacific Rail Line. Two short years after this train was purchased, the copper boom began its decline. The depression closed down the railway operation, and in 1942, the number two was scrapped in preparation for the Shasta Dam Reservoir. Acquired by Hyman Michaels Company, it was leased for use in a Nevada construction project only to return to a Stockton scrapyard where it sat for many years. After a few more stops, it was returned to Shasta County in the care of the Shasta Cascade Rail Preservation Society for display not far from the old Sacramento Valley and Eastern Railway site. Dedicated December 11, 2021, by the last of Lumis chapter 1914 of the Ancient and Honorable Order of E. Clampus Vitus in cooperation with the Shasta Cascade Rail Preservation Society. NGH number 20. Got a friendly feline cat, one of the neighbors came out to visit us. Hi there.
original wood floors inside it.
folks we'll catch you on the next episode if you haven't yet please hit that subscribe button and like please share comment see you soon